Baby Swans parades around town, and Boy Season 17 finalist Ricky Duran. This is some good news. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Some Good News Graphing Edition. As you can see, the other class officers and I thought that this would be a great time to put some good news into the world, inspired by our good friend, John Krasinski. Never met him, but I'd like to. Hey, John, if you're watching, how you doing? With our first bit of news, it comes from Madigan Lenane. Madigan Lenane has been putting on front yard concerts for friends, family, and anybody in the neighborhood who'd like to watch. Let's check it out. Just wonderful, isn't it? Next up on the docket, Swirls and Scoops will be reopening May 18th for everyone to get their ice cream needs fulfilled. Whew, I've been waiting. I've been waiting. In other news, State Representative David Meridian is helping support the Order Local Challenge. He will be giving away gift cards for different restaurants to help support these local businesses. Ain't that just dandy? In what could be my favorite news of the night, baby swans at Lake Ripple are finally hatching. So if you drive by or walk by, you will probably see a couple swans on the pond. When bars and restaurants are closed, what are local musicians to do? Bring it online. And now, to end off this segment with some great news, local Grafton man Keith Love was diagnosed with prostate cancer three years ago. And during these tough times, he's been unable to see his friends, families, and students that he teaches at UTech Boston. So they threw him a little surprise. A major show of support today for a Grafton man diagnosed with terminal cancer. Keith Love is the co-headmaster of Tech Boston Academy. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer three years ago. The 52-year-old recently lost his mother and stepfather, so family, friends, and students wanted to show him some extra love. I cannot thank you enough that what this means to me. Look at this. Unbelievable. Thank you, Lord. Love is currently undergoing treatment at MGH. That's just great. And in other news, the GHS staff will be hosting a parade to help commemorate the seniors of 2020. Live on the scene is senior class president Ian Choi. Ian, how's it looking down there? It's fine. Warms my heart. And now, with some global great news, Vice President Marcella Yaya. Thank you, Nate. And to kick off global good news, in New York and Massachusetts, and as well as other states across the nation, residents have been delivering groceries and prescriptions to those in need, as well as hospitals across the globe have been receiving letters from people thanking healthcare workers who are devoting their lives to help those fighting off COVID-19. Because of stay-at-home orders and lockdown measures, there, have been a, there has been a drastic drop in air pollution due to the closing of many factories, less transportation, and commercial air travel. There are clear skies in Paris and the Eiffel Tower is seen in places like never before. Air pollution has plummeted across Spain and the Philippines. Because we are staying home, more animals are coming out, skies are more blue, and oceans are more clean. Love to hear it. And now folks, I'd like to bring you to my favorite part of today's episode. I have the honor, the privilege to introduce you to season 17 of The Voice runner up Grafton native Ricky Duran. Ricky Duran, how are you doing today? Hey, what's how going on, man? How are you, you doing? doing? Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, oh, man, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. But no, man, anything to help out my uh, my hometown. And, and your dad's a great dude, an awesome musician, and uh, we've jammed on multiple occasions. So yeah, man, just happy to be here. Thanks so much. So what have you been up to this quarantine? What's uh, what's your day today? Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of different every day. I've had some. I've been pretty busy. I get like virtual projects all the time and uh, I've, been, I've been writing a lot 
I've been working on, uh, I'm going to get in the studio in two weeks. We're uh, I'm trying to release three singles in the next, you know, couple months and uh, with videos and I'm working with my marketing team and we're trying to figure out the best way to really push the next step. Um, besides that, uh, I actually have, I'll tell you guys, I don't think I can tell anyone else. I've been working on this little video the last couple of days that's going to be on the voice this season for the finale. Uh, there, they asked like me and a handful of other, uh, previous voice contestants to make like a at home uh, recording of, of us singing this song and they're going to combine them all together. So I'm really excited about that, but I've just been busy with little projects here and there. Oh, that's incredible. So for the voice, they're going to be doing more quarantine, more at home stuff and adapt it to the new. That's exactly. Really, that's yeah. really cool. So what is your favorite from the voice? What is your highlight from that whole experience? Is there any moments that really stick with you? Yeah, definitely the first moment, which was the blind audition, getting the four chair turn was really, you could say was a changing, a really pivotal point in my career. Like right then is when I, I really got the eyes on me. And that was the biggest like influx of fans I've ever seen in a short amount of time, you know, in my career. Uh, but, you know, favorite musical moment, I think was Let It Be. Uh, they gave me the opportunity to, to start playing piano and then play electric guitar. And I don't think they've ever done that for any contestant before, which is really cool. I really pushed them to, to let me do that. And uh, they made it epic and they had backup singers. It was just like, it, it felt like I was at the Grammy Awards, you know, putting on a performance. So it was really cool. I remember we were watching at home and we were waiting for you to whip out the guitar and the, uh, the piano because we knew you had it in you. We were like, when's he going to bring it out? And we were, it was incredible. That was really <laughs> um, mind blowing. him. So to wind it back to Grafton, how much of that do you think really came from Grafton and everything? And what influenced you around here to really bring out that musical ability? It's a great question, man. Um, everything, man. So, you know, as, as you know, I grew up in Grafton. I was born and raised there. I, I lived there until I was about 20, I think 22, maybe, maybe a little younger. Um, but I learned everything I know you know, from basically from my dad and, and I learned the blues listening to old records in my room in Grafton, you know what I mean? Uh, so for instance, performances like River, The Blind Edition and Let It Be and Born Under a Bad Sign, they all came from my roots. And, you know, Let It Be is a song that my father used to sing all the time. He was a singer, he used to play piano and, and he actually used to perform out in the Boston area. Uh, but, you know, those songs, and I think the most moving and touching performances that I put on were deep rooted. They were like uh, emotional and there was a connection to my past, to, to Grafton. So to answer your question, yeah, a lot of it was very influenced by Grafton. So there is a story I've heard, some Grafton folklore, oh, that I'd like oh, to hear your thoughts on. <laughs> uh, I hear there's a story of you maybe walking into school with a guitar on your back late. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I hear the whole situation that happened there? Sure, I was... sure. Um, <laughs> so I was very late always uh, mm -hmm. to school because I, I just, I'm not a morning person. It's hard for me to get going. So I was always just, you know, a couple minutes late and I had reached my maximum of like tardy. So I was going to get like an in-school suspension. Yeah. I was like, oh man. And uh, my friend, Macy Muner at the time, sorry, Macy, the Play cover uh, <laughs> was coming in with me. We were she was late also. We were in first class together. We had art together, and uh, she's like, "I'm going in the back." I'm like, "Me too." I'm not getting in school. <laughs> so I had my guitar for uh, you know jazz ensemble later that day, and we snuck in the back of the old high school building now, um, and went into a back door that was open. And I guess a security officer had had seen somebody go in with a large bag uh, and they knew that they saw Macy but they didn't know who I was for some reason they didn't recognize me and uh, they called her down to the office and at the time I was like nah it's not about me like because they said you know yeah. I don't know if you still have the whole Mr. Goodman please report to the office thing we do not do you know what that is? no so that's basically code for uh, lockdown you know lock your doors shut the lights off somebody like dangerous has entered the building and I'm in art class thinking like, 
this probably isn't me. Like, I just didn't want to believe it, you know? And I sat there for probably like a whole period and Macy still hadn't come back. And I'm like, I think I'm Mr. Goodman. So I told the, the teacher and uh, yeah, it ended up being like a half day because I had waited so long to you know, tell them what was going on. They had to send notes to every family. And uh, I'm sorry, you uh... Yeah, but I'll give props to Macy because she never gave my name. Oh, that's and... a good friend right there. <laughs> that's the writer. She... <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, but that's that story, man. So, do you have anything else you'd like to promote while you're here? Any? Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. So, as far as performances, of course, everything's on hold right now. I have a tentative hold on uh, Hanover Theater, my performance there in October. For now. I understand that might be pushed back. We're going to play it by ear, but just keep an eye for that. You know, uh, it's going to be an awesome show regardless of when it happens. So, you know, look out for that and buy tickets whenever it's available. Um, and also in the next, I would say month and a half, I'm going to be releasing this song. Um, I think the first one will be a tribute to my mom. It's called, uh, she closed her eyes and it's an acoustic song that I wrote. Uh, it's very close to me, and we're going to make a whole video for it. I'm really excited. I'm getting into uh, this studio down here called Arlen Studios. It's like a historic uh, recording studio. It has has had huge names like Buddy Guy, Bare Naked, Bare Naked Ladies, um, Arctic Monkeys, tons of artists. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, once I get that done, should be a couple months, and uh, just keep an eye out for, for my singles that I'll be releasing. All right, will do. Thank you so much for coming on. This is of really course, a man. blast. I mean, thank, thank you so much. This is really an yeah. honor. Anytime, Thanks. man. And to wrap up the video, I'd like to talk about something a little more serious. Grafton Food Banks right now are struggling. They are unable to accept food or anything of the kind because of the current situation, quite obviously. But they're accepting donations through their website, which should be somewhere on the screen now if I figure it out in editing. Um, I hate myself for doing that because I'm going to edit that in. <laughs> Anyways, thank you everyone for watching. This has been Some Good News, Episode 1, Grafton Edition.